What do most people overlook? What are the mistakes most people make when they're moving to DFW to live on some land? I'll tell you in just a minute. My name is Todd Tremonti. I'm a real estate broker in DFW and I live on acreage as well. So we may have some shared passions, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of mistakes made when people are moving to the Dallas-Fort Worth area and they're looking to buy a house or maybe even build a house on say one to 10 acres or, or, or within that range, right? Bigger than a normal residential lot, but smaller than a working farm or ranch. So when you think about that middle ground, we call that homes on land. And we typically say one to 10 acres, but we're seeing a lot of buyers that really, maybe they've been watching TV, maybe they've been you know hunkered down with COVID-19 or something like that. And they're thinking, man, I'd like some space of my own, but they really don't understand the unique differences of potentially not having a paved driveway or having well water or septic or a barbed wire fence as opposed to a privacy fence or maybe solar um, or not being on the same grid as some of your neighbors for electric or um, all sorts of other issues that come with home on land that are huge benefits, but if you don't understand them completely can be major problems or huge um, expenses that weren't expected by folks. So. For example, at my property, we have a few acres and we have well water. Our home is on city water. So we don't have to worry about filtering or problems with the well for our family to, you know, drink or have water in the faucet or take showers. But I'm fortunate that I can irrigate my sprinkler system. And we have a massive one because I've got an orchard and ponds and gardens and flowers and all that stuff. Um, And that stuff is all irrigated off of the well at virtually no expense to me whatsoever because it's groundwater collecting in the well and all I've got to do is maintain the sprinkler system, which is little to no cost. So there's some really cool opportunities like that, but a lot of people don't understand that when they're looking to buy homes on land, they might view a well as a liability, as dangerous and not understand how to cover it or maintain well pumps and things like that. That doesn't need to overwhelm you. Most of this is very, very simple but you are going to want to work with a real estate specialist that understands that and also do some learning and investigating before you dive completely into that. When you think about property lines and fencing, usually if you're in an acreage scenario, it's a very different approach than if you're in a neighborhood scenario where you might split the cost of a wood fence or a cedar fence or what you know, Cedars would obviously, but a privacy fence um, and, and negotiate kind of on the height and the stain colors and things like that, where If you've got some acreage, it it may be that your fence doesn't provide any privacy, but it keeps your neighbor's horse or cow or pig or goat from coming onto your property. Or you might be thinking about where can I put a chicken coop? Does the city or county ordinance allow for that? So these are some of the considerations that a lot of times buyers don't think about early enough. We have a lot of buyers moving to the Dallas Fort Worth area from out of state and they're just assuming that land in Texas is the wild, wild west, and you can do whatever you want. And then they end up buying acreage. And one of the areas we specialize in as a real estate brokerage is homes on one to 10 acres. And a lot of those are right on the edge and outskirts of Dallas. In just a minute, I'll tell you some of the hot areas to do that. But Again, the closer you get to those bigger cities, the more you are going to have some deed restrictions or city building codes or ordinances where you might not be able to have a rooster. You could have some hens, but the cockadoodle do at five o'clock in the morning is going to make all your neighbors angry because you're not out truly fully rural, right? You might be able to have dogs, but you might not be able to have a certain kind of dog. You might be able to have dogs, but you probably can't breed those dogs, right? Can I shoot guns? Probably not if you're in near town, but definitely so if you're out, what a lot of people would say out in the county, out of the um, city limits. So there's so many things we could probably shoot a three hour video here. What you want to know though, is what are those mistakes that a lot of buyers and sellers are making, especially buyers, before they get going with the purchase process? What are they underestimating the cost of propane, for example? A lot of people are just used to having gas delivered straight to your house from the neighborhood utilities. A lot of times, if you're on acreage on the edge of town, um, you're going to have propane 
It might be buried underground in a tank or it might be above ground in a tank, but you are literally storing your propane on site. There is no pipeline with a never ending supply to your home. Now, a lot of people really like that because if the pipeline for whatever reason shuts off, has a problem, we have some massive shortage, you might be still storing 500 or a thousand gallons underground or above ground at your property that nobody else can tap into and you can use at your own rate. So that's true for water storage, gas storage, potentially power storage if you have solar and batteries or something like that. And again, I'm not gonna try to explain all that, but these are the things you need to know up front before you buy a home. Is there a well? Is there septic? How do I get access to my property? Does anyone else control that? How do I handle water, energy, and things like that? Can I build a secondary building? Can I build a barn? Can I build a shed or a workshop or a third garage or a fourth or fifth or sixth garage? Can I put in a pond? Can I put in a pool? All those things you're going to want to know up front. And an agent like our team at the Tatramani Home Selling Team can help you with that. Otherwise, you're probably going to spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours online studying building cones and ordinances and laws. And there's probably no way you're going to get it all right. So if you have questions about that, my contact information is below. We'd love to earn your business and your trust if you're moving to the DFW area. Where might you move if you do that in the DFW area? There's absolute explosions to the east, to the west, and almost exclusively everywhere to the north. When I say exclusively, I mean almost anywhere to the north. So uh, on the east side, it's we're seeing this happen big time in Wiley, Saxe, Murphy, Parker, Nevada, Lucas, St. Paul, Nevada, Farmersville, um, this entire eastern corridor around Lake Levon, right? And then as you get up north, there are still some parts of McKinney, Frisco, just the edges where this is still happening, but certainly Prosper, Melissa, um, Sherman, Justin. I mean, there's a, there's hundreds of cities, but those regions to the east, coming around to the north, um, the outer lying northern parts of Louisville, um, as you get up towards Denton, Denison, definitely. As you come around to the west, Lake Worth, um, Definitely as you get out into Alito, Benbrook, and then certainly southwest of Fort Worth is explosive in this area. Grand Prairie, even out to Grand Barry, um, Bedford, uh, all Bedford's kind of in the mid cities and you're seeing some of that happen still, but it's really building in and closing in on those opportunities. Um, but really, you know, in a 360 view, there are areas around, but major to the east and the west and huge to the north in those what used to be outer, outer, outer lying rings of the community are now kind of the new edge and those new outer lying areas are cropping up, but in a different way than they were even just four or five years ago, where people are not wanting to chunk those properties down into smaller areas with smaller homes. They're wanting larger homes with more area. And like I said, they're condensing their life. They're not going out to the gym, out to the community pool, out to the storage unit, out to the park as much. They're doing that all at home. And we believe this trend is at least generational. We think this is here to stay for the long haul. So if we can help you buy in the area or for sure sell in the area in any of those communities, we have offices on the east side and the west side. We'd love to help you. Our contact information is below or just Google my name, Todd Tremonti, T-R-A-M-O-N-T-E. We'd love to help you, a friend or a family member, make the right choice, be prepared up front, and of course, maximize your investment. Check out other videos on our channel. My, my contact information is below and I'll talk to you on the next one.